Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to build this little three-phase electric uh, radial jet engine. But first, I will uh, show you the build of the bare bones motor. It's uh, the exact same type that's inside the, the jet. Uh, and I will uh, guide you through the uh, process of building one of these. Uh, it's, a, it's an educational project. They don't produce uh, a lot of power, but they are plenty fun to build and you learn a lot. And uh, they sound pretty nice as well when you are revving them up. <laughs> They're kind of scary. Okay, so let's check it out. The uh, first step is to clean up the 3D printed parts. When you're finished cleaning up your printed parts, it's time to coil this uh, 0 0.2 millimeter coated copper wire onto these coil carriers. I use an electric drill to uh, wind up the coils. So I have uh, mounted the uh, coil carrier in the chuck and I have some blue tack here to hold the wire during the wind. And I start out by winding up a couple of turns of wire on my fingers and I twist it to a figure eight and I fasten this uh, loop of wire onto the blue tack and then I start coiling up my coil. And I secure the, uh, the loose end onto the blue tack as well. And there's only one thing to keep in mind, and that is for the coming two coils, do not change the direction of rotation. They have to be coiled the same way. Uh, and also, it's convenient to not make a figure eight on the, the outgoing wire because you want to be able to uh, sort them from each other, the, the start part of the wire and the outgoing part of the wire. So that's pretty much it. And do not overfill the coil because it's a pretty tight fit uh, on the stator. And once you're done with your coil, uh, I use uh, Kapton tape to uh, wrap a couple of turns around the coil so it doesn't unwind. You can use just any clear office tape if you wish. The good thing with using Kapton tape is that it is uh, resistant to elevated temperatures. I think it's good for like over 200 degrees Celsius. But in this application, I think you could uh, get away with just ordinary clear office tape. And now it's time to mount your coils onto the stator. And if the print worked out well, it should be a simple task of press fitting them there. And you can let the wires just point out. Let's have a look at how to uh, connect these coils uh, in a way so that you can uh, run the motor with an ordinary speed controller. What you do is, let me show you here, this is the first coil and this is uh, one of the figure eights. And let's do the second coil here, incoming figure eight coil. And what you do is you simply connect the, the incoming figure eight wires with each other uh, and you solder them together and the outgoing wires here they're actually the wires that you connect to your speed controllers outgoing wires so one on each uh, and this way of connecting a motor is called a star connection and it gives the motor slightly more torque and a lower rpm which is a good thing because this is a air core motor and there's no uh, iron in the core and that means it has low inductance and uh, it's uh, a natural very high speed motor uh, so it, it will be uh, plenty of rpm uh, even though we, we connect it in star mode so now i'm going to um, solder these three ingoing wires together 
And you might remem remember that I said that the wire is coated, it's insulated, so you need to remove the, the uh, insulation. And I'm doing that with a 400 grit sandpaper. So I'm going to cut off the excess wire and then I'm going to gently uh, sand off the insulation of the wires and then solder them together. And now it's time to uh, to cut off the uh, outgoing wires and uh, solder them to the speed controllers outgoing wires and uh, just to keep things uh, neat and tidy I'm going to adhere the uh, stator to a piece of wood here so I can work with it a little bit easier so I'm going to hook it up like that so now you're done with your stator and you have it hooked it up to uh, your speed controller. Let's uh, get on with the uh, rotor. And uh, just as with the stator, where the rule was to always wind the coil in the same direction, there's a rule with the rotor as well, and that is to place your magnets opposing. So if you have one north face magnet here, you're supposed to have a south here, and then a north, and then a south. So if you keep ma that in mind and do that correct, you will be fine. And now I take the, the bunch of the three magnets left here and I feel if it's repelling or if it's attracting and it is repelling. Uh, that means that this face and this face of the magnets are the same. So if I turn it around like this I can feel that it is uh, attracting. Uh, so they are opposite polarity. So I take that and I keep it in the right position so that it is still uh, in the same way. So now it's uh, uh, two different polarities. So this is repelling and the other one is attracting. That's good. So attracting and just to make sure repelling, attracting, repelling. Uh, so I turn that around now it's attracting and then I turn it. So. So, here they are, the four magnets, and they are alternating polarity. And in this uh, super simplified three-phase electric motor build, I'm using a um, two millimeter drill bit as a uh, shaft for the motor. And the hole in the rotor is supposed to be slightly more than two millimeters. If it's not, you might have to drill it uh, out a little bit, but this uh, print worked out well. And the, uh, the hole in the center of the stator is actually less than, uh, slightly less than two millimeter. So you're supposed to be able to uh, simply screw the, uh, the drill bit into the uh, stator. And, uh, and uh, there's a small, small notch on the uh, rotor here in the middle that keeps uh, the distance between the two parts. So, so you should have a, a slight distance between the rotor and the stator, like that. And so there's no bearing in this at all, except for the, <laughs> the plastic and the, and the um, drill bit. So now it's time to um, connect the um, speed controller to the um, battery and to a servo tester. So this servo tester connects to the uh, signal wire on the uh, speed controller. So it tells the speed controller what uh, power setting you want and then you hook up your uh, voltage source, source to the speed controller in these two heavier gauge wires. Uh, let's try that. Let's try to uh, rev it up. So here we have uh, like 10,000 RPM and let's move up. 15, 20, and we have a lot of vibration at 30. Let's move on here to 30. <laughs> okay, yeah, it started jumping off here. Uh, that's okay. So we went up to 30 somewhere and then it wanted to, to uh, take off. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it's uh, good enough for this one. Um, and uh, let's uh, see how it works when we um, 
build this in the uh, small rad radial jet version. Uh, the, uh, the jet part of the system can absorb a lot of the energy so it won't rev uh, too high I hope. And also the, uh, the, uh, the jet version of the motor uh, also have uh, ball bearings which make the vibration problem uh, much less. So I have these um, two millimeter in the diameter and six millimeter outer and two and a half in the width. Uh, so two of these are part of the uh, of the uh, rotor. So one is placed uh, in the middle in the intake and in the middle uh, on the back side as well. So let's uh, let's go uh, let's go on and build that one. And once you're finished, it's uh, time for the uh, coil winding process again. The build process of the electric jet is the same as the bare bones version of the electric motor. Uh, it could be worth to uh, drill out this center hole. I don't know if it's visible, but it's a small, small hole in the center that will keep the shaft uh, aligned. So you might just want to re-drill that. It's uh, in the 3D printed part, but it might uh, have gotten slightly congested during the print. So it's worth just uh, taking a drill and, and uh, making sure the, the hole is uh, is clean before you mount the um, the uh, coils uh, onto the uh, carrier here, the stator. Here I have my three coils and I have my figure eight wires that I'm going to solder together and the other ones, the outgoing wires, I'm going to uh, uh, make them run out of this little hole here which uh, matches the, uh, the display mount uh, which also has a hole in it, so I can uh, conveniently uh, have the wires running out from the uh, this the space stand. Okay, so uh, I have uh, soldered the um, three ingoing wires together, and I have the three outgoing wires that will end up uh, in the speed controller, and I will. Uh, uh, make them go through the hole in the uh, display stand. Okay, so now we are ready with the uh, stator. I think it looks good on its little display stand, which is uh, glued to the uh, outer shell. And so we can move on and, uh, and uh, place the magnets in the uh, rotor of this little electric jet. The same rule applies as with the bare bones motor. You have to place them um, every other north-south alternating. Uh, and before we do that, on this rotor, we will place the small ball bearing in here and uh, the other ball bearing in the front. Where once the ball bearing is in there, you can start gluing your magnets. So I'm sanding this uh, magnet slightly and I have a little drop of glue in the position where the and it goes, so there, that's my first. And now you're done with the, uh, the rotor, except for the shaft. And I'm putting in this uh, drill bit here and I will add a little bit of, of glue. And I'll try to spread this glue out a little bit and hold the shaft in place. Yeah, that's good. And uh, now we're really close. Now I will just uh, assemble this. And here we want as tight fit as possible. Yeah, something like that. And now it's time to hook up the um, speed controller. Okay, so now it's finally time to, uh, to run it. Uh, I've just uh, hooked it up and I'm going to give this a little turn here. And let's see here. 
Yes, it turn, it actually turns in the right direction. If it would, wouldn't have turned the right direction, you can just swap these wires and resolder them and it will go in the opposite direction. Oh, this is exciting. Now we just have to do some tests here. Yeah, it's kind of wiggly. I think we have to balance it. But nevertheless, sounds cool and it's blowing air. Okay, so it runs, it really runs. So from the front then, this is what you see. But I do need to, uh, to balance it before we can go full throttle. And the one way to balance uh, small items like this is to uh, place a piece of tape and just uh, move it around. But you have to make a, a mark, of course, to know where you are at in the process of balancing it. So I could notice that it went uh, smoother when I placed the, uh, the small weight at uh, somewhere between number one and number four. So I'm going to take the opportunity to place a bit of a reflective tape in that position and perhaps add some uh, more weight as well. Yeah, I think we can add more weight okay, there. So now I have, I have added weight in the form of the reflective tape and a little bit of glue here. And it seems to run much smoother. So I think we can do a RPM test again here and see what, what it uh, has to give. Let's rev it up here. So we have 4000 RPM. Yeah, so it seemed to max out somewhere around uh, 18,000, 19,000 RPM uh, uh, on 3 cell uh, LiPo. That's nice. When it comes to the speed controller, you really don't need, need much at all. Uh, this is a 20 amp, this is so a 20 amp ECS, but I think the maximum current draw is like one and a half or perhaps two amps. So uh, it's uh, ridiculously oversized. So you can go a lot smaller than that. Okay, that's pretty much it. A nice little jet build. <laughs>